Hello, At The Warren Podcast. This is episode 17. It is July 17th, 2020. A uh, beautiful evening, 8.15 at night, and uh, just out for a little walk. I wanted to share with you the theme of this podcast is about habit stacking. What is habit stacking? And uh, I left off at episode 16 talking about how um, I was going about the time tracking. I shared with you how important time tracking was to me. And I want to give you a prime example of what happened in my world today, Um, what my life was like, you know, prior to to tracking my time, and really elaborate on the the step-by-step process that I go through. Um, It's pretty simple, but stacking these habits, that's, I heard that on another podcast today, and uh, I was like, man, that's that's the word. that's the phrase for what you call what I'm doing it's called habit stacking you start off with small habits and uh, one of the guys was explaining how he couldn't he, he couldn't tell that his son was getting larger and growing until his son started to outgrow clothes um, and his comment was you know I've seen my son every day And every day I didn't think he was getting any bigger. But the fact that we've been in COVID for three or four months now, and he can't wear clothes that we had before the COVID, it just was, you know, he was explaining how he had this, this thought that, you know, it's these daily unseen um, tasks and daily things that are happening that we we unconsciously don't know are happening uh, that ultimately affect our end result and he called it habit stacking doing uh, doing things every day that are so small that you start to stack them on top of each other well one of the small things that I do every day that they're I call them a bookend zeros and one of those bookend zeros are um, consists of tracking my time. So think about this in terms of 12 midnight to 12 midnight the next day. You have to have a stopping point somewhere in the day. Um, but the best way that I've, I was told to do it and what I think really works well uh, is to think of it from midnight to midnight. So what I do is whenever I am uh, first sitting down at my computer, I will open up my laptop and I, I shared on the episode 16 how the first thing I do is start to fill out my journal and uh, I, I don't write anything about my time in my journal except for the crucial time of when I woke up that day. And then I write down the first few things that I did to hold myself accountable and the things that I did that morning in my journal up till about, um, about the time I get ready to get dressed to go to work. Um, so just to recap from the last episode, I, I, my alarm goes off at 3.45 a.m. And the first thing I do is I, I, I get up and I go turn off the alarm. Uh, I keep my phone in the kitchen plugged in to the charger so it charges all night. And there's so many reasons why I keep my phone in the kitchen as opposed to beside my bed but let's not go into all those reasons right now let me stick to my schedule before I get on a soapbox (laughs) Um, but uh, I turn off the alarm it's 3.45 a.m. 
and then I will uh, I'll start the coffee pot. So the night before, I always make the coffee pot, and I used to waste it. I used to waste a bunch of coffee by making a full pot, but I, I make a half a pot. Um, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but the point is, I make the coffee the night before, so there's a little incentive, uh, j- just a little bit more reason to get up and not still lay in bed. Um, my alarm is not so loud that it wakes up the whole house either. This iPhone app that comes with the phone, it's got a bedtime feature on it. Uh, like if you go to the app where you could have a stopwatch or you go to the app and you can record um, or set a timer from the Apple app that comes with a phone, um, there's a bedtime feature there that you can play with this little, these two hands on a, on a clock and you can set it for, okay, at 9 p.m. I went to bed. I go to bed at 9 p.m. and I wake up at five then that's eight hours of sleep you know you you can play with these two um hands on the clock and and be able to know okay well if i if i if i make this target and get into bed i'm at least going to get x amount of hours of sleep Uh, that's helpful especially when i'm traveling um but the point is the ringtone is not something that and some people might say, oh, well, I don't want to leave it in the kitchen because it'll wake up my, my kids and wake up my wife at, at four in the morning. I don't want to set my alarm and leave it out there. I need to have it next to my bed so I can cut it off in the morning. And that's just not a real um, fear. You know, there's nothing there that wakes up the family. Uh, it, but once I start the coffee pot, I'll then go use the restroom. And I try to follow um, the, the the simple rules that my sponsor shared with me. He said, always remember in the morning, RPM. RPM stands for rise, pee, and meditate. It got, also, it can mean rise, pray, and meditate. But, um, you know, you got to go to the bathroom first thing in the morning. So while the coffee's going, I, I then go to the head to the restroom, and uh, by the time I get back, the coffee's getting close to being done. But I then will use the rug in the kitchen, and I get on my knees um, with the soft rug, and I get on my knees there in the kitchen, and I will say the third step prayer. God, I offer myself to thee to be with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. So, after I finish the third step prayer, I have start off my morning right with a nice prayer um, you know offering my life and my will over to my higher power I then get up from the, the rug and the coffee's there I've got my, my mug and I fill it up I then go and sit down um, in my little library study it's, just, it's basically a little breakfast nook that we've turned into our library and for, for at least five minutes, sometimes it's seven or eight minutes, like this morning, but for at least five minutes, I'm doing a, a guided meditation, um, just surrendering my thoughts and trying to stay focused on my breathing. Uh, I've got an app that I'm using right now called Audio Joy. I did find a couple other apps that are podcast apps, or uh, podcasts actually, that seem to have some more um, some, some more guided meditations that I'm going to be trying soon but the point is just something to help guide me through a nice meditation um, so I've already you know by 4 o'clock in the morning I've already 
within that 15 minute time, I've already gotten up, started the coffee, uh, used the restroom, got on my knees, offered my life and my day to my higher power and done a five minute meditation. All of that's done. I mean, done in 15 minutes. If you do that alone, I feel like you're already ahead of 90% of the world, <laughs> you know? Um, so the, the rest of my morning routine is spent going through books. Um, I start off trying to read a page in the Bible. Um, I started in the beginning. And now I'm in the Deuteronomy chapter. Uh, I've already read through the whole Bible last year, just reading a page a day. Um, after I finish that, I've got a, a couple other books that I go through, a daily reflection type books, and also books that are, um, uh, I, I read one page in the big book, in the AA big book. I also read one page in the Al-Anon 12 and 12 book. Uh, and I'm studying to get my private pilot app, um, license. I'm studying real hard to get a, a private pilot's license so that I can uh, learn to fly. And so I spend probably about 20 minutes every morning reading a page in this, in this big old manual that I'm trying to learn. Uh, all that is done, you know, at, at, that's done at the end of my reading. Uh, and right now I've got 11 books or so, maybe 12 books that I'm reading just one page in every morning and I'll dog gear that page and um, it's actually neat one thing I really found that's a new rule for me that I that helps me so much in my reading because it is so early and because the chair that I'm sitting in I'll start getting back aches and cramping up um, you know reading basically for two hours every morning um, every time I finish a page in a book I will physically stand up and put that book on the bookshelf that's behind my chair and, and then I'll have to you know, turn around and come back and sit back down. Um, that was inspired, that little bit of activity was actually inspired by my father-in-law who teaches contractor seminars and he told me when I was attending his contracting seminar training one day he, he highly recommended that people who are studying to pass their or people who are in the exam and actually taking the contractor's license exam to uh, take breaks to let the blood flow from their butt to their head <laughs> he said when you sit down in um, a, a chair for extended period of time all the blood goes down and and stops and lodges in your butt because you're sitting on it and by the act of standing up you, you start that blood flow and you get it moving through your body again uh, and that that really works that works so well for me every book that I read a page in I just turn around and get up from my chair and stick it on the shelf turn around I might go refill my coffee cup uh, you know top it off with some warm coffee if I've read in three or four books, um, and then I'll come and sit back down, uh, prop my feet up on the chair in front of me, and uh, continue on with the next book. I've also, I haven't shared about this, but it's just something, a small little tool. I've got a, a clip on light that clips to the, the book that I'm reading, and it's got a little light that, that pulls over and helps to provide extra light for my reading. Um, I heard somebody say that a guy ended up having to wear glasses and having poor eyesight because he was reading in, in, in prison. He was reading a bunch of books in prison and he had poor light. And ultimately it affected his eyesight so that he had to have glasses. Um, so I try, to, I try very hard to, to use that light to uh, help me see in the morning. Um, so with the whole time tracking, I don't write down everything I did every 15 minutes. I, I write it down in like chunks. Um, so when I get to work, I've, 
I've written down in my journal those things that I did that morning. And then I've, I'm looking at the day before. So when I'm working in my spreadsheet, I've got all of my expenses. And I'm, I'm looking at the bank account to see. Uh, I look at the activity and I scroll down and I see, okay, what expenses did I have? You know, everything that I'm putting in is for the day that, that was just had you know, for yesterday. I'm tracking the expenses that were that went through the account yesterday or the income that we had yesterday. And then I'm also assessing my 24 hours. So I will, let's say for example, I've got a little spot that the first number that I put in on my spreadsheet is what time I, I woke up. So I already told you I woke up at 345 this morning. So I put 3.75, you know, because a whole hour is 100, uh, 100%. Um, if it's if it's 345, it'd be 3.75. If it, it was, uh, if I got up at 3.30 in the morning, it'd, it'd be 3.5 and so on so forth so by me putting 3.75 in that top line under today's column for Friday um, I've got a formula a few lines down that one of the one of the rows that I'm tracking one of the rows that I like to track and keep and, and keep good good eye on is my sleep so my sleep is the addition of adding up what I got in the morning with a couple hours that I got in the evening for that day. So let's keep, let's keep going with this. So today I, I looked at it and I said, okay, I got up at 345, but I didn't get to bed until I didn't get home from Charleston. I had to go to Charleston for a work event. I didn't get home till 1030. Um, to wind down, I didn't go to sleep till about 11 after I showered and everything. So I only put down one hour for Thursday. Um, and I did actually get up Thursday morning. Uh, I slept in until five um, and I was a, a little tired. I was off of my normal routine that day because I went to a, a buddy's birthday party on Wednesday afternoon. Um, I, and I, I didn't get to bed at my normal eight o'clock in that in the evening. It was a little later. Uh, it was more like nine o'clock. So at least today I'm conscious of it. <laughs> you know, I, at, at least today I know that I, if I went to bed at ten o'clock on Wednesday, that's two hours that I'm putting down of, of sleep that I got that night for for Wednesday, and I didn't get up. Um, I, I got up at 3.45 in the morning, so 3.75 plus 2 is 5.75. That is not enough sleep. That's not enough sleep at all. Um, that was Wednesday. Thursday, I slept till 5 to try to help make up for that. And I didn't feel guilty. I didn't feel like I was, uh, you know, not sticking to my routine, <laughs> of getting up at 345 by sleeping in until five. I mean, I was able to justify it and say, no, I got to catch up on a little bit of sleep here because I only had 5.75. Welcome back to the Path to Warren podcast. I left off, we were talking about um, tracking my sleeping hours are very important. Um, the other categories are uh, obviously work and what I found is for uh, I mentioned when I get to work I do my numbers it takes about five or ten minutes to get my bank account pulled up get the numbers off of that put it in the journal put it in the spreadsheet um, uh, whatever time I got to work I'm logging it in so if it's 8.15 or 8.30, I put in the notes, I put 8.30 for that day. But then I go back to the day before on the column of the day before. And if I left at 5.30 or 5.45 from work, 
I'll fill in what time I left. If I slip away to a lunch meeting, uh, right down the road, we have some great programs. I, I go to a, a meeting at lunch normally. Um, I'll, I'll put there that I left at 12 and returned at one. Um, then in the cell, in the actual Excel spreadsheet, in that little cell, I'll put, if I got there at 8.30 to 12, I'll put 3.5 hours plus um, it, if I got back from the lunch appointment at, at one o'clock and I stayed till 5.30, then I'll put um, 4.5 hours. So the, the, the formula there, if I hover over it or click on it, I can see the actual amount of hours down to the 15 minute of, of tracking my time at work. Um, I don't track if I go to the restroom or, you know, if, if I stop and close my mind or my eyes for a five minute meditation in the middle of this break from working on something hard. Uh, it's the time that I'm at work that I, I put down. Uh, this is very helpful because the, the columns all add up to the end of the week and I'm able to see, okay, I worked 47 hours this week or I only worked 35 hours. I need to work some more to get my 40 hours that I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to do or 45 hours I'm supposed to do. Um, and then there's a couple other categories there that are broken out in self-care, like going to the gym, going to meetings, um, uh, walking around the neighborhood. Those are things that I do for self-care. Uh, I've got some things I do for fun. I've got a category for family. I've got a category for um, uh, sleeping, like I said. Uh, so if I find that I'm only spending 15 minutes or 20 minutes or even probably an hour a day with family, I might need to start working on that. But on a, on a Friday afternoon or Friday evening or whenever, really, if I spend three hours with my family watching a movie or just playing Legos with my daughter, to be able to track that and get credit for it in my spreadsheet, it makes it all work out. You know, I'm, I'm happy to go play Legos and not feel guilty about working if I know I'm getting credit for it on my spreadsheet because I'm trying to achieve this balance of, of happiness. Um, I can't tell you how many times I would, would be have been playing with my daughter early on when I was still active and out there using, um, when I would be playing with her and be thinking about what I need to do on Monday or what I need to do the next day at work. You know, that's not a sane and that's not how you practice serenity. Um, that'll drive you crazy and it causes all kinds of stress in my back and um, just going mentally crazy thinking about um, what all I have to do for work. Tracking my time, I never knew that it allowed me to be present and enjoy special moments um, with my family, enjoy the moments with, you know, w with the in-laws or the my parents or um, with friends, you know, I get to log that under fun, you know, going to my buddy's birthday party. He had, he turned 43. It was very special. I needed to stop by and say, Hey, and happy birthday. Instead of feeling guilty and, uh, kicking myself for, Hey, I need to be in bed. You know, no, this is, this goes under my fun category. Cause I need to have some fun in my life in order to be balanced. So, um, tracking time on this spreadsheet daily, uh, and, and not like I don't carry around my journal to fill in what I'm doing throughout the day. I simply look at it the first thing in the morning when I'm doing my numbers. This is a part of my numbers. I do my time tracking and I will look at and think about the day before. It's part of the whole reflection process of the last 24 hours and planning for the next 24 hours. I think about the last 24 hours and say, um, Okay, well, I remember what time I left work. I remember what time I got back from lunch. I remember what time I left lunch. Okay, get those logged in. I got lunch figured out. That's a big chunk of the day. And I know what time I woke up, and I know what time I went to bed. Um, if I went to bed at, at 9 o'clock the day before, then I'll put, um, you know, 
it, it'll already be populated, like I said, to say 345 from the morning I got up. So it'll say 345, uh, 3.7, it'll say equals 3.75, and I'll put plus three because I went to bed at nine o'clock and I'll hit enter. And so that'll fill in my sleeping hours. And then I just try to think about in a general way, um, where did I drive? That's one I forgot to tell you about, drive time. I've got a category for drive time. Um, I had no idea I drive two hours a day (laughs) on average. Uh, It blew my mind. 15 minutes to the gym in the morning, 15 minutes back, 30 minutes to work, 15 minutes to a meeting at lunch, 15 minutes back, 30 minutes back home. That's two hours. That's two hours. Um, so I, I track all that, but um, I just roughly think about, okay, well, I was at dinner with my family from 6 p.m. I helped them clean up dinner, play with my daughter, read her a book in bed till 8 o'clock. That's two hours, so I logged two hours in for um, that. I remember I went to the gym early in the morning, so under self-care, I'll put equals one. That was one hour. Um, and then I went to a meeting, so plus another hour. Um, and then, um, what else? For fun, tonight, I, I went out and watered my plants in the yard and worked in the yard for 30 minutes when I got home. So under self-care, I'll put 0.5. And when you add up those things, they will add up to more, hopefully, the, of more than 24 hours. If it didn't add up to 24 hours, you need to, to figure out what you were doing and, and uh, try to come up with, you know, where was it? Was it watching TV? Maybe that, you know, that needs to go under fun. Um, so that's a little bit about how I keep track of my time. And the time tracking has rocked my world. It's a, one of the small... Um, habit stacking techniques that I've, I've been able to adapt in my life and I highly recommend it to anybody and everybody in, in, in recovery or not in recovery. It's a game changer. I promise. Hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you and uh, make a contribution. Thanks guys. If you like what you heard, hit subscribe, share it with a friend. Thanks so much. I appreciate it more than you know. It means the world to me. Thank you.